Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tilo Gewandi Laura. Have you ever been faced with the problem of how to assess the right vessels with which to fulfill your divine purpose? If you have, then join me today as we look into the various vessels lying dormant all around you which you can borrow to fulfill your divine purpose. Miracle walker, promise keeper, light and the darkness, my God, that is who you When dream don't come to pass, dream again. You dream before to be where you are today. Dream again to move forward. Today we'll be looking at the various vessels we can borrow to achieve our divine purpose. Borrowing is a term that we don't like. And like the Bible also said that the borrower is a slave to the lender. But we want to look into a passage of the Bible where the Bible are commanded, where a lie, we want to look into the passage of the Bible where the prophet commanded a widow to go and borrow because of the need she was in at that particular time, because of the situation at hand, the prophet asked, have to ask her to go and borrow. I'll be reading from the book of Second Kings chapter 4. I'll be reading from verse 1. He said, Now one of the wives of a man of the sons of the prophet cried out to Elijah for help, saying, Your servant, my husband, is dead, and you know that your servant reverently feared the Lord. But the creditor is coming to take my two sons to, to be his slave. But the creditor is coming to take my two sons to be his slaves in payment for a loan. Elijah said to her, What shall I do for you? Tell me what do you have of value in the house? She said, Your maid servant has nothing in the house except a small jar of olive oil. Then he said, Go borrow containers from all from your neighbors. Go borrow containers from your neighbors, empty containers, and not just a few. Then you shall go in and shut the door behind you and your sons and pour out the oil you have into all these containers. And you shall set aside each one when it is full. So she left him and shut the door behind her and her sons. They were bringing her the containers as she poured the oil. When the containers were all full, she said to her son, Bring me another container. And he said to her, There is not a one left. Then the oil stopped multiplying. Then she came and told the man of God. He said, Go sell the oil and pay your debts, and you and your sons can live on the rest. This is a place we are familiar with. In this passage of the Bible, we learn that one of these prophets died. But before he died, he was owing some debt. And now the creditors has come to take away his sons, to be his slave, because he died owing this debt. Now the poor widow, or the widow, have run to the prophet, the man of God, Elisha. And said, look at the situation at hand. Please, can you come to my help? And Elisha asked her one question. He said, what do you have in your home? She said, I have nothing except a little jar of oil. And the, and the prophet gave her this command, this instruction. He said, go to your neighbors, borrow vessels. And he said, not a few, which means don't borrow few. Go to your neighbors, borrow some vessels, and not a few. Then he gave him instruction of what to do with the little oil he, uh, he she had. Remember this woman, the husband passed away. He was already owing some creditors. Now problems have results have come because of the situation. This widow have run to Elijah, and Elijah, Elisha, they run to Elisha. And Elisha is giving her another instruction again. Go and borrow. The husband died from <coughs> owing those he borrowed from. The loans he took. And now the man of God is still giving her instruction. Go and borrow. But this time, not just borrow money or cash. 
borrow empty vessels. What are you to do with these empty vessels? This woman, first of all, has something, which is a little jar of oil. <coughs> this woman has, first of all, an, a little jar of oil, which is what she got at home. But there was a miracle the man of God wanted to perform. But for him to perform this miracle, he needed her to go and get some empty containers, which she didn't have enough. But he said, go to your neighbors, go and borrow them. As a child of God, there's something God has placed in you. A special talent, a gift, and you must use them. It may be a calling, whatever it is. There's something God has given to you and you need to multiply it. Do you remember the story? of the man who was traveling and bible said that he gave talents he gave gold bags of gold which we see as talents to his servants to one he gave five to another he gave two to another he gave one and he gave each of them instructions said do business with it go and invest it make profit for me while i'm away because i am coming back and i want you to have make something out of it each of them went with their talent to make something with their talent. This woman have her own talent, which you see here as a little jar of oil. But the man of God need to do a miracle, need to multiply this oil. But she didn't have enough vessel. He didn't ask her to go and buy one, but he asked her go and borrow. Which means what you need today is lying dormant somewhere. Do you know that what you need today, someone is wasting it. Is it life you need? Someone is wasting that life. Haven't you seen people that doctor has given few days or few months to live? And they are still praying, trusting God to increase their life. Why someone that is healthy somewhere is committing suicide? Have you not seen people praying for the fruit of the womb, looking for a child? Yes, someone is committing abortion. And someone is giving up, uh, giving birth to a baby and throwing in the bin. Have you not seen somebody praying for money? And someone is somewhere wasting the money. Don't you also read about countries or nations where there's drought and they're just looking for drinking water. Yet someone is somewhere wasting water. Whatever you need today, someone is wasting it. Someone is praying for freedom in the prison. And some other person, I've seen been to prison, I've seen prisoners where they have given amnesty and they go and commit another crime because they want to go back to that same prison. To them, they feel their life is better there, they get better, easy food. I work with the prison, so I've seen such. You pray and someone is giving amnesty and you hear that the same day or some the next day, they are back to prison. They just commit a crime because they want to go back. Yet someone was not opportune to get that amnesty and is still praying for his or her freedom. Whatever you need today, someone is wasting it. And that is why I say God has given you a vessel. I don't know what your own vessel is. Like I said, God has given you a talent like he gave to the servants. He said some he gave five, some he gave two, some he gave one. Your own talent. Say so he gave each and every one the, on based on their ability. And he has given them instruction, go and multiply to our camp. As a child of God, there is a talent God has given to you. Remember when Jesus was living, saying, occupy till I come. We are all here for a mission. We, be, we are here living not for ourselves, but for the master. Remember the life we are living was given to us by someone and at the end we will still give account of that life like that mother that master came back requiring from each and every one of them to present their investment one day you will leave this planet earth and the father will request from you to make account of the talent he has given to you and i know some of you your problem is yes i have this talent but how? I'm struggling to get the vessel. 
I'm struggling to get the means to fulfill it. What is that talent the master has given to you? There are very, very many, like I said, there are many vessels lying around you. Christmas is a vessel. Valentine's Day is a vessel. Special occasions are a vessel, are vessels. Different festivals in your area, they are all vessels. Orphanages, they are vessels. You mustn't build your own. If you can do, but while you know you are still waiting to do yours, to build yours, why not use the available ones? God has given you a talent, maybe singing talent, maybe cooking, whatever you have. And you are looking for opportunity. How can I accompany it? I don't have enough money. There are vessels around you you need to borrow for the sake of the kingdom. Jesus is a good example for us. While Jesus was here on earth, he never built even one synagogue. Yet he went to the available synagogues and preached. Yes, he will say he's the owner of the synagogue. After all, he is God. But he used what was available to do this ministry. Jesus borrowed Peter's boats to preach. He is still God. But he wants to borrow something somewhere. Because these men have been toiling and they caught nothing. Jesus, and he had to borrow the boats. And at the end, he rewarded them. He borrowed people's houses. He used it as an opportunity to preach. He borrowed a donkey when he wanted to go to Jerusalem. Which means there are so many vessels lying all around you which you can borrow. Why start in the church? Why there are you struggling to fulfill your God-given time? There's something God has placed in you. Look around you. There are vessels around you you can borrow. There are empty halls. There are empty, there are empty halls. There are churches. Your church. There may be days that is free. There are clubs. There are brothers. You are always struggling in the church, fighting for the pulpit, getting angry that nobody is allowing you to preach. Have you ever thought of going to the brother to preach? Gathering some, not going alone. You have to put your own maximum security also. Like Jesus said, his disciples send them in twos, two by two, to go and preach. Get someone. Must our ministry start and end in the church? For me, church is a place where we are empowered and equipped. Then we go out there to shine the light. Jesus told us, say, go into all the worlds and preach the good news. Go into all the systems of this world, all the institutions. Have you ever thought of going to the prison? Have you ever thought of going to the orphanage? What of the street kids in your area? Are you just looking for the poopy, killing yourself because they are not giving you opportunity to preach, fighting to be seen in the church? Why these very institutions, these worlds that he commanded us to go are lying dormant? Why are we sitting down arguing if Christmas, if Jesus was actually born on Christmas or not? It's a verse who borrow it. Preach. Remember Paul preached in a sinner, in an altar. You see, it's an altar of an unknown God. In our days, we'll say it's an idol altar. Yes, the people, they don't even know the God, will have classified it as an idol altar. But Jesus, but Paul went there, preached the gospel of Jesus, and men gave their life to Christ. There are very various vessels. There are various vessels lying all around you. Can you borrow them for the master? Why arguing? Should Christians celebrate Valentine or not? Organize program on that day. If singing is what you have, give on that day. Get people sing for them. Use that opportunity to preach Christ. Why are we busy arguing over things that doesn't matter? Yet these vessels are lying. You can't stop them from using them. You can't stop people from celebrating Valentine. On that day, if you're singing, you can bring a if you have gifted. On that day, if you are gifted with singing. You can organize a, song, a, a worship program. You can organize a dinner and give your song out there. Organize dinner for, 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 for people. Let them come and celebrate. Then preach Jesus for, to them. One thing Jesus to say, go into all the worlds. But our churches are telling us, don't go there. Don't mingle with them. This festival is not, not for Christians. Christians should keep back. Jesus said, go to them. 
but we are key. The churches are keeping us back from going to these people. And these are vessels the master have preached and provided for us. Can we get up and go into those places? Borrow these vessels. Borrow people's houses. Borrow that church. Borrow that or orphanage. Borrow that prison. Go there and showcase your, 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 your talent. There's something the master have given to you. No matter how little, all Jesus wants us to do is to come back with an investment. He's not asking, he's not requiring from you what he didn't give you. He said, on that day, the one with the five talent came and presented what he has invested in, his own profit. The one with two came and presented his own. But the one with one began to give reason. I know you, I went and hid it. Are you hiding your talent? God will say he gave each one according to his ability. God has given each and every one of us talents according to our ability. On that day, some people will come with the millions of souls they have won. Some will come with their thousands. Some will come with their tens of units. Whichever number, some will come with one. According to your ability, bring something. Like, no way we use fishing as an example. Someone may go with just a hook to fish. Catch one fish per time, as much as you can. Some another person might go with an industrial net and you will catch many fish. Whatever which quantity you catch is based on what you have. The master won't give you a hook and require you to catch the same number of fish that the person that he has given an industrial net is catching. No. Just make sure you come with something. Put your talent into use. Don't give excuse, I don't have this, I don't have this. That's it. There are things around you you can borrow. There are venues lying dormant. There are people with instruments lying dormant. Like say, what you need, someone is wasting it. Can you ask God to open your eye to see it? This woman needed this miracle. And God wanted to perform the miracle. He didn't ask her to go and build. Must you build your own? He asked her to go and borrow. He didn't ask her to go and buy. Must you start your own church? Are there not others allowing? If God instructed you, yes, do that. But maybe meanwhile, use your talent. While you are waiting, use your talent. Use the vessels lying around you. Someone is something, someone is a vessel is lying somewhere wasting. Why not make use of it? There are special festivals. There are special locations God have provided around us. We are busy arguing, are there could Christians be involved or not? Have you ever thought of starting a ministry in a brothel? We are too holy to visit these places. I'm not saying go alone, but organize a team. Go there and preach to these ones. What of the street kids on your street? You pass by them. Have you ever tried to bring a function? Or something that will bring this. It may just be a few minutes. It may just be a few hours. Bring them together and minister to Christ to them. I remember someone was giving testimony on how he did it one time. See, it was a Father's Day. He just cooked and went where they know that the street kids were. Gathered them together and gave them food and prayed Jesus to them. That is using his own talent. You might have the gift of singing. Gather them, pray and sing with them. Where is that place where you know there is a vacuum? Go and borrow that vessel. And one thing about God again, the talent you have, God has given you that talent. To you is small. Remember as long as that woman, but the, Elijah, remember, Elijah told the woman, go and borrow vessel, but don't borrow few. And the woman, and that woman, the, the widow went and borrowed vessels. Bible says as long as there was vessel, the oil keep flowing. If you can borrow enough, God can send enough anointing. God can send enough. What you have to you might be small. To her, it was just a little oil. But as she went and borrowed vessel, as long as there were vessels, the oil keep flowing. Bible said the oil only stopped flowing when the vessels were free. Borrow as much as you can. God is able to use them to fulfill his purpose. God will never run out of the content, but you have enough container for him. The power of God is not short. The message and the power and the ministry of God is not short. 
Whatever God wants to do, whatever God has given to you, it can overflow. To you, it's just little. But God can multiply it. And he has given us instruction to multiply it. But the instruction is that go and borrow. Look around you. What can you use? What is lying dormant around you that you can use to fulfill your God-given purpose? What is that gift God has given to you? And you are still waiting for when you will get the right finance. You are still waiting for when you will get the right man, the right people. You are still waiting for when you will get the right instruments. No, there are some already around, around you. You are looking at the big one, but if you start little with the ones that are you, ask around, look around. Let the Holy Spirit help you to discover where to go and invest your talent. God is still waiting for you. He is coming back. He went for a journey. Jesus said, I am coming back for my church. When he comes, what will he present him with? Will he tell him, you're just busy going to work? I'm just busy doing this. I was busy finding, no. Will you busy? I'm just busy taking care of my family. That is not our main purpose here. Yet in doing all those things, how are we propagating the kingdom of God? God is said we should stop working, we should stop taking care of our family. As we are doing them, how are we propagating the kingdom? In conclusion, I will say, God has given you something. Don't let that talent die. You know your gifting. You know what you can do. To you, it might just be little. Like that woman said, it's just a little jar of oil. That your little jar of oil, that your little talent can bring someone into the kingdom. Use that talent and bring someone into the kingdom. It might be gift, like I say, it might just be gift in talent of cooking. It might just be talent of sewing. It might just be talent of singing. Whatever your talent is, God didn't give it just for your own personal use only. He didn't give it to you just to make money only. How can you use it to propagate the kingdom of God? And I, like I said, there are vessels all around you. Look around you. There are special locations, there are festivals, there are events. Jesus borrowed wedding. He went to the wedding and turned water into wine. He borrowed funerals. He went to the to Lazarus funeral, rose him and, and woke him from dead. When he went to the funeral of Lazarus, he went to his house. He raised him up from dead. When he saw that widow that was going to bury his only son, her only son. When he saw that widow that was going to bury her only son. He raised him up. What is the vessel around you? There are opportunities that are presenting themselves each day. Maybe your problem is that what I have is too small. It's not too small. If you will borrow another vessel, like I say, the master will keep increasing it. Borrow vessel. Start from somewhere. As long as the vessels were available, the oil keep, kept pouring. Borrow the vessels. Don't worry about filling them. Don't worry about the quantity of talent you have. Don't, matter, don't bother yourself how small your, your, your talent is. All you need to do is to borrow the vessel. And as you borrow the vessel, you make it available. Keep pouring. God will keep multiplying. The master has given us assignment. We must fulfill destiny. Borrow the vessels. Fulfill your God-given mandate. Don't wait until you get it big. Don't wait for the perfect condition. Don't die because you don't have enough on your own. Borrow it. Jesus borrowed the donkey. Jesus went to the synagogues and, and, and preached. Instead of complaining of that your church that looks spiritually dead, why not ask yourself, what can I bring to this church? What do I have to offer to bring revival in this church? That church that is powerless is a vessel. Bring them down the power. What has God given you? Borrow the vessel around you. They are all lying. I say, what you need, someone is wasting it somewhere. Pray and ask God to direct you, to show you the vessel lying around you that you need to borrow. And as you borrow, propagate the kingdom of God. We are going back home one day. If Jesus tarries, if Jesus come, we go with him. If he doesn't come, if we die, we also go. But the main thing, when you get home on that day, what will you present? When the master require of you, what will you give him? Will you tell him like that servant, I went, I buried the talent. 
because to you it's too small. It's not too small. The master can multiply it. All you need to do for him is to get him enough vessels, get him enough opportunities, go to that festival, go to that houses, go to that occasions, use that special event, use that venue that is lying there, that board meeting, that company breakfast, whatever you can do, you borrow those vessels and fulfill the destiny God has given to you. Thank you for listening. I believe you'll be blessed. Until next time, bye.